The CFL held their annual combine this weekend as CIS players from around the country in Toronto to showcase their skills in front of all of the big names in CFL coaching and front offices. Uh, the Ticats obviously were well represented. Uh, most of the front office staff and coaching staff was here. The advantages of being just down the road uh, in Hamilton. Uh, so uh, this is an interesting uh, draft for a number of different reasons. Uh, it is a top-heavy draft, largely because the CFL has uh, made some adjustments to the rules that has limited uh, the number of players that are going to be available, um, both from an NCAA and a CIS perspective. So it is going to be a draft where there are some quality uh, players available at the top of the draft, uh, but it isn't as deep a draft as in uh, it would be in, in most years. Uh, compounding that, the Ticats uh, don't draft until number 9 overall. They have number 9 and number 11 and so it'll be interesting to see uh, you know, who's available by the time the Ticats have those two picks uh, at the end of the first and the beginning of the second round. Um, the advantage for the Ticats is that uh, they don't necessarily have any pressing needs. I think they know, you know who their seven Canadian starters are going to be so they don't necessarily have a must-have uh, to get out of this draft, they'll probably be able to go uh, with the best possible player uh, that's available when they finally select. And, or also, they, they would be in an excellent position to combine those two picks and try and move up in the draft. If there was a player they absolutely uh, had to have that was they thought wasn't going to be available by the time they pick at number nine. Now, who made a good impression in this draft? I think the num or at the combine, sorry, uh, Quinn Smith was a guy, uh, the Concordia defensive lineman who uh, did very, very well both in the testing sessions on Saturday and in the one-on-ones. His uh, was a stock, I think, that went uh, up uh, this weekend. He can play on both sides of the ball and took reps in the one-on-ones at both defensive line and offensive line. Uh, but I think people see him mostly as a defensive line. But he's a guy, I think, that made uh, the biggest impression on, uh, on scouts and front office types uh, this weekend. Locally, um, the story that, that I've thought was most interesting, uh, Will Finch was here, uh, Burlington native, a quarterback at Western. He's not eligible for the draft for another couple of years, but the CFL often brings in a couple of extra arms to throw uh, for the one-on-one -on -one sessions, and Finch was one of the guys they called. And so it was an opportunity for him to sort of showcase his talents, uh, even though he's not eligible to be drafted for a couple of seasons, get a feel for what this is going to be like. I think Finch is going to be the guy that we have this you know, great Canadian uh, hope conversation, whether or not he can be the guy that finally, finally is able as a Canadian to play quarterback in the CFL. Uh, we have this discussion every couple of years. Kyle, Kyle Quinlan was the guy we, we talked about a couple of years ago as, as the latest guy. But Finch is a guy I think that people think has the physical tools to do it if he continues to grow and mature as a player. So he was here, and that was sort of an interesting to see, interesting to see him here and see how he develops over the next couple of years. Uh, so make sure you check out the Scratching Post blog. I'll have a lot more from the Combine as well as a full report in Monday's Spectator. Reporting for the Hamilton Spectator from Varsity Stadium in Toronto, I'm Drew Edwards.